a final round of, uh, of the plagues and the, the time of Jacob's trouble when, you know, when the leaders of the, of the world are coming together, this false religion, the, uh, uh, the beast and the false prophet, all headed up by, the, by Satan himself, as, as the world empire... That, relig that religious system uh, that's going to be in the last days, as all those come to a head, they come to a head in opposition to God and to the things of God. And we read this, and, uh, and it's hard to imagine. With our, with our finite minds, it's hard to imagine in the infinite wisdom of God how these things must come to pass, but they will. And uh, Brother Lawrence... How, how tall, how high is a horse's bridle? You deal with horses, about how high is it? Five feet? Six feet? I had to ask that while I was thinking about it. We'll get to that in a minute, but I had to ask because I forget. Uh, but, but to know that the Bible tells us that the, the blood will run in the valley of Megiddo, the valley of Armageddon, Jez, the uh, Jezreel Valley, that it will run to the horse's bridle uh, is you know, is something to consider and something to think about, but it is true, and it's going to happen. How in the world would that happen? Because the millions and millions of people that come and make their last stand against uh, the remnant of Israel, and as they come against them, and, and even, you know, it, things are going to be so bad that if God doesn't stop and, and uh, control it all, and God doesn't come back and end it all, then the world would probably totally annihilate themselves because it's all going to come to pass. So this leads up to, the, to the, the battle of Armageddon, and then Jesus comes on the scene, and he, uh, you know, he cleans up the mess, so to speak, and he ends it all, and then he sets up his millennial reign. Uh, but the, you know, I don't know where but this, is going, this is all going to head down at the uh, nation of Israel in Jerusalem. It's where it's all going to come uh, to pass is there in Israel. Uh, but where is this Roman Empire? Where is their headquarters going to be set up? Where is their uh, place of worship going to be set up when they worship? The, most of that, we believe, will take place in Rome, uh, as, as the best I can tell, and that's where they'll set up. But when it all comes together, there's going to be an alliance formed against the nation of Israel by all nations, and we'll see that here partly. And all nations are going to come against Israel. I've been asked many times, where is America? Where is the United States in this plan? I don't know. I don't see it mentioned in Scripture. And the best answer that I've got, and, and we see it as, you know, as our country is progressively going downhill as a standard in the world, uh, we become, I believe, of no consequence in the world. And that's sad, friend. That's a sad thing. Our country has lasted over 200 years, far longer than any uh, you know, any uh, organized nation has lasted, but it seems like we're on such a decline that in a few more years, if something doesn't change, we're going to be non, non that word. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. We're, we're not, we're not going to be very important in the world. Uh, world leaders are rising. Everybody's after the nuclear weapon and, and all they can get of them as fast as they can get them. And, uh, you know, Iran wants a, a nuclear weapon. They'll get it. You know, sure as I'm standing here tonight, they're going to get that. They'll, they'll play around till they've got one, and then uh, they'll, you know, they'll launch that thing against Israel because that's what they want to do. And when they get the technology to do so, it wouldn't surprise me a bit if they don't unless Israel takes them out first, which I don't any time on the news, uh, you know, I, I can be... Uh, wouldn't be surprised if, if Israel hasn't made a, a strike against their nuclear facilities. They say they don't have the uh, uh, capability to do that, but I got news for them. I don't think they know all that I know, amen, about what God can do to, through that little nation. But whatever it is, we're just, we're just winding up. Things are winding down. I don't know where the United States is unless it's just the fact that we have become so non-sequential uh, that we don't matter. And, and we're going to have no leadership, no authority in the world. Now, these last, uh, the, these last vials of the wrath of God that are poured out here in, in Revelation chapter number 16 are going to come in rapid succession. Uh, they're, going to, they're going to come fast. They're going to come quickly. 
and and as one you know as one is done then the other one is it comes along so let's read these tonight and i don't know if we we may not get through all of them tonight because there's uh quite a bit in in between the lines here but here john is and he's hearing a great voice in verse number one and i heard a great voice out of the temple now who's in the temple god is in the temple and uh, it, is, it is from God that he hears the great voice of God. And it's saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now these angels have got a particular uh, mission. They're God. They've all got an individual thing that they're going to do. And uh, it's going to be, the whole world is going to be affected. It's not, back in the days when uh, God brought judgment against Egypt because of the children of Israel, he he allowed plagues upon the earth. And you see some similarities here. He allowed plagues to come upon Egypt, but it was centered around Egypt. But this is going to be a worldwide event. This is going to be where nothing is going to escape. Let me interject right here. I'm glad I'm saved by the grace of God. And when I read these things to you, uh, you can rest assured that you're not going to see this and you're not going to experience this because we know back in chapter number four that the church has already left the building. Amen. The church is already in heaven with the Lord. So he tells those angels, he said, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath, the vials, listen what it's saying, the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Such wrath as this world has never seen. Uh, seeing God and his, all his, uh, his, his furious pouring out of, of plagues against those that do not believe, those blasphemers, uh, those that curse God and those that want to have nothing to do, even after all the opportunity they've had. And they still say, you know, they still uh, uh, curse God and they still blaspheme against him. And so that's sin and that's sin at its core. And that's all headed up by, you know, by Satan himself and we know Satan is defeated, and this is the way God ends it all. This is the way the end for, uh, for this world system uh, comes apart. And the first, the first angel and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. So here we find the vial of the wrath of God being poured out, and it is a... It is a, a, a grievous, a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. All those that have the mark of the beast, those, if you don't have it, you can't buy or sell. You can't eat. And if you do have it, you're going to suffer the wrath of God. And, you know, I, I, it, just hypothetically, if I had the choice and I was here, I think I'd rather have, you know, have not the wrath of God and not be able to buy and sell other than to face what is going to come upon these that are here left upon this earth. So men that have the mark of the beast, those that bow and worship the false image, uh, those that worship you know, the Antichrist and, and Satan, those that do that are going to be covered with noisome and, and balls. Now I can't imagine how grievous that might be. I can't imagine how painful that must be. You can, you can break out in a rash of poison oak and it about drive you nuts if you're allergic to it. And, it, you know, it, it's a terrible thing. When I had, uh, you know, when I had the, the spotted fever, uh, not only did I have that, which that wasn't, you know, it was, it was a pretty serious thing, but I got over it pretty quick uh, because of antibiotics. But you know what else I got while I had that? I got chiggers. <laughs> and I want to tell you something. The chiggers caused me more grief than the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever because they are a constant itch. I mean, just drive you nuts. I'll tell you just how many I had below my knees. I counted over 100. And you can edit that out, Frank. You don't have to put that out there in public. <laughs> but, it, you know, and, and, I, and I, thought, I thought, you know, this is awful. This is, I mean, just all the time. You know, I, I just, I mean, it just like drove me nuts. Frank's had the hives. And tell me what you had, shingles. And, and uh, Frank said that about drove him nuts. But can you imagine your body breaking out in balls such as and, and hurt and pain and sore and all of that? Well, friend, it's going to happen to those that are not believers, to those that are left on this earth. 
they're going to suffer these things because after, after you've heard me preach tonight, if you're here lost without God, and after you've he heard me tell that people that are lost are going to, are, are going to go through this if, if, unless they die first and go directly to hell, uh, those folks are going to suffer these things. If the rapture takes place and the tribulation sets in, those that are not a child of God are going to go through the great tribulation. And the only way out of that is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. That's the only, that's the only possible way for anybody in this building tonight to escape all of this. And so, friend, if the rapture took place tonight, if you're saved by the grace of God, then you'll go out of here tonight. But if not, seven years from now, uh, or you know, somewhere along that time from now, you'll be suffering what I'm reading to you about right now. That's horrible. I mean, that's horrible. And you wonder, well, why don't people listen to that? Why don't they believe that? Because they have been blinded by the devil, and uh, they will not believe. They will not hear. And there's many people that you know that I that I know I preach to, and I know they're lost because some of them admittedly have said they're lost, and and uh, some of them just you know you can just tell. That they, you know, there's there's people once in a while that just don't know the Lord. But I'll tell you something, friend. Uh, they won't listen because the devil puts so many things in front of them that they have to, you know, that they have to do in order to to get saved. But the Bible says, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved." Trust Him, call on Him, repent of your sins, and you can be born again. Now, I don't know anybody here tonight that's lost, but I'm just telling you, your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones that don't believe, they're going to be facing this during the tribulation. So they'll be faced with that. that. That is minor to what else is going to go on in these seven vials of the wrath of God. And uh, the second, verse number three, and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. It became as the blood of a dead man. What is the blood of a dead man? What does it do? It gels. It's congealed. It's uh, clotted up, if you want to use that word. But that's what it says. It says it become as the uh, blood of a dead man. And that's what the sea is going to become. Everything in it is going to die. And the stench of that after a few days is going to be horrendous. It's going to be terrible. And so they're not only going to be facing the, the, those boils that they have, but then uh, all, around, all around them, the, the water, we read that in a minute, is going to be is going to be congealed as as I read it right, or if it was just turned into blood as as uh, uh, the rivers was there in the days of Moses, even that. But the but the all the sea life is going to die, and it's going to be a mess. So there uh, there you have that. Every living soul in the sea died, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. Now this and they became blood. This, this uh, back up here in, the, in uh, verse number three, it became as the blood of a dead man. And here in verse number four, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. So you've got uh, the blood of a dead man, and you've got blood of, uh, uh, you know, as of humans, you've got blood. And the rivers and the fountains, now you imagine being in this day and, uh, you going into your kitchen and going to make a pot of coffee. I'm just surmised. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. And you go in and go and make a pot of coffee and you turn on the water and you think, well, the water's dirty. And then all of a sudden it turns blood red because that's what's coming out of your, that's what's coming out of your speaking. A oh, preacher, that can't happen. Listen, if you don't believe God and you don't believe the book, then you need help. Amen. You need help of the Lord because this is the word of God. This is plainly going to happen. Or if you were out in the mountains and you decided you were, were thirsty, there's a little old, uh, well, several, but I know of one little old stream uh, poor near I, where I grew up that I, when I go in the mountains and I'm thirsty, I go to that little place and I'll dig me out a little hole and I'll let it fill up with water and I'll drink all I want to. It's pure, it's clean, and it tastes good. Well, suppose I was out and I decided I wanted to do that and I went to that little stream and be running blood. That's what it would have. All you're going to have to drink, if I drink anything, you're going to have to drink blood. You say, a preacher, surely you don't. I believe every bit of it. I believe it because the word of God tells me that that's what's going to happen. When this, this third angel pours out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they become blood. All over the world, the worldwide, every drop of water is going to be a drop of blood. Friend, that's a terrible, that is a horrible thing uh, to imagine. 
And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast, and shalt be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And I'll tell you something, friend. This may seem like a horrible thing for God to allow to happen or God to cause to happen, in which God does. He, he, he is, has given the vows, and he has, uh, you know, in his wisdom and his uh, sovereignty, God knows all, he has put in those vows exactly his judgment upon the earth. And he's a righteous God. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord, God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And so we need not question what God does or how God does it because the Word, the word of God tells us that his, that his judgments are righteous and God's right. And so these things are going to happen. Sure as I stand before you tonight, in the time of Jacob's trouble, in the near the end of the tribulation period, these seven vials of the wrath of God are going to be poured out upon man. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power is given unto him to scorch men with fire. Now look, we, we've been out in the heat before, and we've been out in the sun before, and God put the sun just close enough to the earth, or put the earth close enough to the sun, however God done it, but he did that just so we'd have the right temperature on this earth to live. Now, we say sometimes we go places and it gets way too hot. Well, it might, you know, but those places are usually desert and, and man don't tend to live there. But you imagine now God made the thing. He can move the earth closer to the sun as he wants to. Or he can brighten up the sun as bright as he wants it to be to cause this to happen. But not only do they have balls on their skin, not only is their blood is all they have to drink or to, you know, to anything they see, but now they've got the sun that's going to scorch man. And that's what the Bible says. They're going to scorch. Power is given in him to scorch men with fire. And I can, I can only imagine how it must be that, uh, you know, that, that the sun is so bright and so hot that it melts the tops of the roofs, uh, that men are, are walking or women are walking and they're going and their clothes suddenly catch on fire because of the, the scorching of the sun as it bears down upon man. Friend, I'm telling you, folks better get right with the Lord. This is soon come to pass. This is soon to come to pass because we are living in the last days of time. Now here's what men do in verse 9. And men were scorched with great heat, and what did they do? And blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Now, wouldn't you think that men then would be uh, eager to turn to God? But you remember what happened to Pharaoh when, when the plagues were poured out upon Pharaoh? He hardened his heart toward God. This is exactly what's going to happen in the end day. These people, people are going to be so blinded by Satan and they're going to believe such a lie of the devil the Bible says that even if, if it were so, even the very elect could be deceived. But it's not possible. But they're going to be so, uh, you know, so blinded and, and so uh, sold out to the devil and his purpose that even in, when all this is going on, they're going to blaspheme God. They're going to blaspheme his name and curse him uh, uh, for, for what he's doing to them. And we're going to stop right here with verse number 11. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And again, guess what happened? And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain and their sores, and repented not of their deed. Now, this is poured out upon uh, the beast and his kingdom, uh, upon those uh, all those nations that turn against God. It's just another plague. It's just another terrible thing. And they... They're going to hurt so bad. Remember, they got only blood. That's all they've got. Uh, they broke out in boils, and on top of the boils, their skin is scorched with the heat of the sun. And now there is uh, the, the king is full of darkness, and, and they gnawed their tongues. That's how much it's going to hurt. They're gnawing their tongues because of these vials of wrath. And what did they do? They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repenting not of their deeds. 
Friend, I'm telling you, God is a loving, merciful, kind God. But when God's had enough, God's had enough. And when it comes time for him to mete out judgment upon this earth, then God righteously is going to do so. He gives man plenty of space for repentance. He's, his mercy endureth forever, the Bible tells us. And his mercy endureth forever. And so when it comes time, when it comes time that, that people won't accept his mercy, they won't, they won't, even though his mercy was there, they rejected the mercy of God. And so they're going to be held accountable with the wrath of God. And we read on down through the rest of this, not tonight. We'll, we'll pick up on that later. But uh, things are, are happening quickly. And when it all ends up at the, at the uh, Jezreel Valley, uh, the valley of the, where the Battle of Armageddon takes place, and I stood there on Mount Carmel and looked out over the Jezreel Valley, and it's, I forget how many miles it is long and how many miles it is wide but it's it's an awesome thing to stand there and look over there and know that one day that is going to flow with with blood to the horse's bridle and i believe it ever bit you say preacher it's impossible nothing's impossible with god you watch and see and you, you know if you're here uh on planet earth now you might not be at that particular place but it will happen and the river euphrates is going to dry up and that's going to lead a path uh, to the to the nation of Israel, and they're going to all set in upon that remnant that's still there, and and then God's going to come and He's going to end it all. He's going to take care of everything, and and then uh, the millennial reign will set in. So you read the rest of the chapter. And we'll we'll uh, speak a little bit about these last few verses uh, the next time, and then this is soon going to going to end up, and and we'll see the things beyond the tribulation. And what a blessed time that's going to be. I, we, we'll be in heaven, remember, when all this is going on. You and I will be in heaven, but are the things on earth that's going to happen, they're going to happen. And you believe it tonight because the Word of God tells us that that's what it's going to happen. Father, we thank you for the Word of God tonight. Blessed, I pray. And Lord, help us to rightly divide the Word of truth. And even though, the Lord, in our own minds, sometimes we can't understand how all this will take place, we know and believe the Word of God that it will. And I pray right now, God, you'd help us to live our last days on this earth to glorify you. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.